Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. He's outspoken and iconoclastic, calling out idiocy, racial and otherwise, whatever its form and source. He's a free speech fanatic who's taken on the ACLU when he was a board member and a black civil rights activist who's taken on the NAACP. He once was assistant director. He's Michael Myers, the executive director of the New York Civil Rights Coalition and a frequent contributor to the national political conversation, speaking and publishing extensively on issues of race relations, urban affairs, education, housing, police abuse, civil liberties, and civil rights. He's here to talk about, well, just about anything he wants to. Welcome back, Michael. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. What, right now, today, has got you particularly ticked off? The lack of standards uh, in, edu Where? in education. Go ahead. We're applying standards more and higher standards for students and teachers, supervisors, and administrators. Yet, the mayor of the city of New York, Michael Bloomberg, appoints an unqualified person to be New York City Schools boss. And so that in, you are, in the person of Kathy Black. Well, you, you were outspoken in opposition. You also didn't like Joel Klein. Explain the reasons. Justify the opposition. Well, let me put it this way with respect to Kathy Black first. It's a scam, and it's a sham. In what the way? It's a scam because Mayor Bloomberg uh, didn't give us any notice that Joel Klein was resigning as New York City Schools Chancellor. The same day that we find out that New York City Schools Chancellor Joel Klein has resigned, he announces his pick, his su the successor to Joel Klein, meaning Kathy Black. No search, no equal opportunity for the best and best qualified, the talented, the best and the brightest. Nothing. Although he says in an Orwellian fashion, oh, but I did a public search. And his public search was, well, I thought about like, people on top of my head, you know, there's five, six, okay. ten people. Okay, so you're not happy with the choice. But no, she's wait, there. Wait, go wait, ahead, no, go ahead, wait, go ahead. No, because he picked somebody who has zero educational experience in the public educational system, zero teaching experience, and didn't meet the statutory qualifications for New York City Schools Chancellor, which include Go ahead. a master's degree. She only has a BA. And includes some sense that you should know about curriculum, you should know about assessment, you should know about teaching. She has zero experience. What about the, the compromise so that she I appoints? Said, Go ahead. Well, that's why I said it was a scam, first of all, because he knew she was not qualified. And then for, therefore he said, well, you know, I have marital control. Oh, you're going to do voices and, Well, this is what he's saying. Go ahead. You know, I have marital control. The state legislature wants me to control the schools. But no, the state legislature kept the qualifications for school superintendent in the educational law. So what does he say? Well, we got to change the qualifications. I have to pick the best, the, the best manager because this school system needs a manager now. It doesn't need an educator anymore. He doesn't get to decide that. So what happens is he has to get a, quote, waiver from the New York State Commissioner of Education, David Steiner. And what does David Steiner do? Well, he gets pressured from the Chancellor of the Board of Regents, Merrill Tisch. And you know this who whole hired, fact. I know, of course, of course I know. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Meryl Tish, who in effect hired him as New York State Education Commissioner, she wants Kathy Black, the socialite, uh, to get the job. So what happens? He is forced to uh, uh, appoint an advisory panel of education experts. This is under the statute. This is Steiner. This, this is Steiner. This is under the statute. He's not doing us any favor. The educational advisory panel to him said, you know, as opposed to whether or not he should grant the waiver. Does she meet the statutory qualifications for a waiver? The panel comes in and says, and it was randomly stacked to Bloomberg's favor, by the way, including some of his cronies and supplicants and allies. And the vote still went and against the, them. And, Come they, on. and they came in and said, no, well, well, it, do it not give the waiver. But it She's not qualified. But it talks to their independence. Well. Despite the fact that they're recipients of Bloomberg money. So they, they no, say well, something well, positive, no? Well, no, because the vote was secret. Well, we know it was a 4-2-2. We know it's 4-2-2. 4 against, 
two in favor yeah, and, and two I, not and, at this and time. I have, and I have figured out who the who the four Okay, but don't, don't. But I'm not going to give go you ahead. that. Okay. okay. But so the what's point, the point? The, she's in. What, no, what no, happens she's now? In, she's not in. Okay, go ahead. She's not in because she, she uh, Commissioner Steiner ignored the advice of his panel. In fact, he met with the panel. This is what, this is the But they chair. had no legal. I mean, just this a is second. A, they didn't have legal just authority. Oh, I'm supposed just to say second. just a second. Just go a ahead. Second. Go ahead. Go. So he meets with his advisory panel. He meets with them and says, "Hey, this is what I want. I want a compromise." Now he's supposed to get independent advice. He's telling them, "I want a compromise. I want to. I, I don't want to reject the waiver, but but if I can get the mayor to appoint a deputy who has educational experience and credentials, then I think I will give the waiver." On a conditional basis. Well, you can't do that. You can't make. You can't give a person a pilot license because the co-pilot will fly the plane. Okay, wait. Stop for one second. <laughs> yeah. Right. As of now, this woman, this person, is the school's chancellor. There may be a suit that says there is a lawsuit. that Steiner violated the law. But assuming, let's just assume yeah. that the suit is not successful and Kathy Black becomes chancellor. All this, in a sense, is history. Where do we go from there? Where do we go from that point on? Well, I think we have, uh, if assuming, you're right. Right. Now, that's no, a no, big no, assumption. Okay, let's I, take I, the I, assumption. I hate, to, I hate assumptions because you know what assumptions do. Right, I understand. Uh, okay, but assuming she is the United States Schools Chancellor for the next three years, because it will only be three years, right. because that's when Bloomberg will, will thankfully be gone. Go ahead. Because we will not extend term limits again. Um, he, she has to show something in terms of other than cliches, other than, um, and she's famous for you, the you knows, other than the usual, well, I care for children. Okay, wait a second, wait a second. You are her chief advisor. Let's go into the advisor. My chief advisor would right. get, get Excuse out. Get me. out now. Oh, <laughs> come on. Get out now because you don't know anything about curriculum. You don't know anything about assessment. Okay. You don't know anything about diversity. Okay. You don't even send your own children to public schools. Get out now. Why did because I... the parents and the grassroots are not going to give you a chance to fail on their children's time. Okay. I shouldn't have asked you what ticked you off the most, obviously. Well, that's not, that's not the most that ticks me off. What ticks me off right now is oh, Obama. Okay. Okay. That ticks me off let, the most. Let me, ask, <laughs> let me ask a different question. Okay. Sorry I asked that <laughs> one first. Okay, what ticks you off the most? Obama. Why? You call him Obama, I call him I-bomber. I call him I-bomber because it's all about himself. I, I, I. Every sentence. I, I, I. It's never we. He's, I, call, I call this situation that we have, a president with no experience in terms, of legis in terms of being a good legislator, in terms of being a good administrator or a good executive, the man's an amateur. And so I call him the abominable snowman because oh, he gave God. us a snow job. He gave us a snow job. He has promised... You're like the prince of sound bites. Go ahead. He's, a bomb, he's, Go. A, he's an abominable snowman. He, he has given us a snow job in his campaign. Every campaign promise he made, he's broken. He has flip flop. He has morphed into George W. Bush, oh, the wait, very wait, person wait, he ran. He quote unquote ran against. Okay, wait a minute. Not that George Bush was his opponent. Okay, that wait, was a minute. wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want some substance here. Mm -hmm. Give me some illustrations of this okay. charge. Go okay. ahead. We're supposed to be out of Afghanistan. <laughs> we're deep into Afghanistan, and we're not. Now he's even changed the date, the exit date for being out of Af 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 Afghanistan. It may be 2014, but don't count on that. So we're okay. still in Afghanistan. Okay, I'm go watch. ahead. Don't ask, don't tell. He, saw, he calls himself the commander-in-chief. You know, a wartime president, just like George Bush used to say. How come he hasn't just said, you know, I'm the commander-in-chief, like Harry Truman said, I'm the commander-in-chief. Just abolish, don't ask, don't tell. Stop discharging people because of their sexual orientation. It's, it's my order. Okay, okay. okay. diamond okay. number three. Go ahead, go. Right, that's number two. Number three, the health care reform, so-called reform. Oh, go ahead. He didn't fight for a public option. He didn't fight for universal health care coverage. There, there is so much about this man that is ob abominable. Oh, and, God. And, 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 and what can I say about Obama in terms of his wishy-washiness? He is so tepid. He is so timid. In that great line in Seven Days in May, I don't know if you saw the movie. But oh, he's one of my it's favorites. A, it's a great on. line. And the general talks to the President of the United States. This and the is President, Bert Linkus. That's right. The general says to the President of the United States, you know, may I speak freely? And the President says, ah, speak freely. He says, Mr. President, not only are you a weak sister, you are a criminally weak sister. That is what Barack 
insane Obama is. Oh, God. A criminally weak sister. Okay. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of him not being Wait able a minute. to stand so up. So you want, who do you want in 2012? Well, I don't have any candidate. I voted for Barack Obama. <laughs> You're going to vote don't for get, Sarah don't get me, Palin? Don't get me wrong. Not George I mean, Sarah Palin is not I mean, going to. Sarah Palin is not going to be a candidate for president. I mean, okay. It's nice. Okay. To, okay. It's okay. nice okay. for her to, okay. to be on Fox News okay. Channel and make money. One one of your purposes in life is to challenge racial idiocy. Yeah. What's the latest and most grievous examples of racial idiocy? Oh. So many examples. Okay, give me, give me, uh, give me Michael Myers' top three sound bites and all. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, you have the Charlie Wrangler situation, which is racially interesting. Go ahead. You have uh, people who are trying to excuse Charlie Wrangler because he's been such a such good representative to the black people in Harlem. That's racial idiocy. The man says he's not corrupt, but come on. The elements of corruption are you don't pay your taxes. The elements of corruption are you have rent for rent stabilized apartments in Harlem in the luxury, luxurious Lennox Terrace. I mean, could I have four rent stabilized apartments in Lennox Terrace? Come on, I can't even get one. And he takes well, one. I wouldn't have then he takes as one. And then, <laughs> then he takes one of those for his so-called son, and, and his son doesn't even live there. Oh, and wait. never lived there. How and he used that and he used that apartment for a campaign over. And then he goes to the Congress and says, Well, yeah, now it wasn't corruption. I don't want to be censored. I don't want I don't want to and then he goes and they gave him a hearing that he's been demanding, and he doesn't I can't afford a lawyer, and he walks out of the hearing. Then he blames everything on not having a hearing, not being able to cross examine witnesses. Come on. This is what I call racial idiocy. Why is it racial idiocy? Because the only reason why Charlie Wang gets away with this kind of nonsense is the double standard of race. That's why. So explain. Explain the double standard. Because Nancy Pelosi, who is supposed to be zero tolerance for corruption, unethical corrupt behavior in the, in the Congress, she, her knees started to wobble because it was Charlie Rango, the black, the senior black. Okay, okay. And she couldn't deal with him as a person who was unethical because they always see race first. They always see the, the idiocy of skin color as the barometer for saying, well, we, we have to understand those people. Okay. Well, I'm sick of that. Okay. Give me another, That's one example. Okay, of, give me another of, example of racial There are so idiocy. many examples of racial I know. I, Asking you these questions is really <laughs> setting you up. Go ahead. Yeah, well, Obama is another example of racial idiocy. Oh, well, we, we beat up. No, no, oh, okay. I, I'll give oh, you an example. A different, I'll give you a different example. A different because it's, it's black people, if but not for the, the racial identification and deification of skin color, black people would not stick with Barack Obama. He is, Why? He is so well, Where did they go? Because he, what, just a second. Go ahead. He's inexperienced, he's inept, he's an amateur, he's a flip-flopper, he doesn't represent the interests of the black and, and poor and powerless people. He just doesn't. How he is identified he? with the rich and the famous okay, and the powerful time out, time and out. the wealthy. Time out. Yeah. Make the point with but argument I, and evidence. I want to make my point about racial idiocy in terms of black go Obama. Ahead, go ahead. And that is, if... The only reason why there's not a, a challenge from the left, from the progressive left, in, within the Democratic Party, the only reason is the Democrats can't win without the black vote. And as long as the black vote stays with Barack Obama, there will be no challenge. He ought to be ashamed of himself, embarrassed enough, realize that he's inept, he, can, he, he cannot do this job, and stand down. We, the progressive left should make him stand down like the progressive left forced LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was a pretty good doggone president in terms of race and civil rights policy. He was a very good president. But the progressive left told him he had to stand down because he messed up. I did say messed up. He messed up in oh, Vietnam. God. And this president is messing up in Afghanistan. This president is messing up in health care reform. The premium is going up, not down. This president is messing up in every theater in which he operates. Oh, God. He's okay. in that. Okay, stop. NAACP. Oh. Another example. Of I mean, uh, you, this some of you were quoted saying that the NAACP is, quote, now a political arm of the White House. Explain the remark in the context. Mm. Well, let's put it this way. Uh -oh. There's so many examples of this, and we don't have much time. But there was a New York Post cartoon about um, the stimulus bill and this monkey that was on the ground because of the Connecticut situation and two police officers shooting the monkey. And, and the caption said, they'll have to find somebody else to write the next stimulus bill. Now, the Barack Obama didn't write the stimulus bill, but the NAACP 
claimed that that New York postcard too was racist. Wait a minute. And wait, wait a minute. Murdoch apologized. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You asked for examples of racial idiocy. Let I'm, me give you the okay, example. I'm, I'm sorry. Not only did they say that this was that monkey represented Barack Obama, <laughs> and that therefore because black, there's a history of, of making <sighs> black people out of monkeys and beasts. Then they say. Then they said this was a not so subtle invitation for some kook out there to assassinate the first African-American president. This is outrageous. Okay, Rachel number two Indian I thing. can understand, but okay. number one, I saw that cartoon the day it came out, mm -hmm. and my reaction was, maybe I'm thinking, you know, as Michael Myers would, would critique in racial terms, that looked really more than borderline racist. No, I didn't. Okay, not no, to you. I saw it. I saw it. Look, the old phrase is a monkey could write a better bill. I mean, that's what it meant. To me, it wasn't racist. Okay. And just because the first, first black president is, the, is, is in office, why does the NSP have to be come to his defense on everything? He needs to be criticized, too. His skin color is not, does not protect him from criticism, so he, but the NSP believes it does. So the NSP is now his, his protectorate, his flank. And they are always in the White House, just like Al Sharpton is in the White House. And Barack Obama, in another exercise of racial idiocy, empowers the demagogues. He invites them to the White House. He, 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 had got, he identifies with you, just like he identified with the Reverend Jeremiah Right. Until, okay. until he couldn't identify with him anymore and threw him under the bus. And eventually he'll throw all these racial demigods on the bus because you know why? He wants to get reelected. And once he gets reelected, then he'll go back to, to okay. type. Okay, I, hate, I even hate to mention the name Al Sharpton. I but I did. will. But go ahead. <laughs> what about him? Uh, talk about Sharpton, talk about Sharpton and Cuomo, talk about Sharpton's sort of legitimation, his relationship to Mike Bloomberg, his relationship to Mario. I'll Mario, give you one example of Al Sharpton, because I think too much is made of Al Sharpton. Okay, go ahead. Okay, too much is made of Al Okay, I'm done. Yeah, he's a person who's out for himself. and. But, I remember the the, the uh, Freedom Party that that Charles Barron supposedly created. Right, who ran for governor? Who ran for governor? Oh, what was Al Sharpton on there? He supposedly supported it, but then he didn't support it. Uh, so what's the gripe? The, no, the gripe is that Al Sharpton is about himself. Al Sharpton is missing in action. Where was he on the Kathy Black situation? Where? Al, Al Sharpton is, 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 is a person who always has a racial gripe where well, there is no racial gripe. With respect to uh, uh, Governor Cuomo, before Governor Cuomo, Governor-elect Cuomo, could even appoint, name his trans transition team, it was Al Sharpton was blowing off steam, the bloviator saying, oh, the, the, the transition, the, the, the advisors to Cuomo are not diverse enough. Well, he didn't even name his transition team yet. And what he, mean, what he meant to say was, he wants to be the black, he wants his people to be the black in Cuomo's ears, whispering sweet little nothings. Okay. And that's what it will be, little nothings. Okay, let me ask, a, let, let me ask the question. Are there black leaders out there, and ought to be there such a thing as black leaders? I don't believe in black leaders. You believe in what? I believe in leadership. It doesn't matter to me. Irrespective of race. It doesn't race. matter to me what color you are. It really doesn't. And what, means, what, what matters to me is effective leadership. What matters to me is demonstrable leadership. And if you mess up, whether you're Charlie Rangel or David Patterson or Elliot Spitzer or Barack Obama or LBJ, if you mess up, you get out. And you should feel embarrassed enough like LBJ felt, embarrassed enough to know you should stand down, to give the people a break and put somebody else in. It's just like that Mayor of Bloomberg. This guy, uh -oh. oh, we're gonna talk about. I'm talking about. Go ahead, I know I'm on CUNY. Go ahead. Yeah, Mayor Bloomberg, he he believes in term limits until his term is up. And then he changes the law. Oh, this is old news. No, no, it's not old news. Oh, go ahead. No, it's not go old ahead, news. Go ahead. Because okay, it's old news in the sense that he changed the law and the and the incumbents of the city council change the city charter on their own so they can run for three terms. Right, not all of them, but okay, okay go ahead. Well, well you know, but ahead. enough of them to go change ahead. the law. Oh, go ahead. All right, so now he, he meaning Bloomberg, says, well, I'll appoint a city charter oh, revision God. commission. Go there you go. No, here That's we go. Right. Here we go. Go, go ahead. And, and the city charter revision, the thing that they do is they say, okay, we, are, we hear the people, they want, again, we want to give them a chance to vote for two terms, and two terms, and that's it. Headed by the Chancellor no, of the City, nice. City University Get me of New York. fired. Go ahead. Just I, keep I'm running not, at the you, I exempt you from my, from my comment. Okay, go but ahead. Headed by the, the Chancellor of the City University of New York, Matthew Goldstein, a good friend of mine, you know, 
but I can't. God, get, with I can't, like you, I, no, can't, I can't get information from this commission. Okay, well, you, you, know, you got to foil everything. I know Matthew Goldstein. He's a friend of mine. How come I, he can't give me information oh. about the racial composition of the staff of this of the city revision oh, committee? Oh God, Charter city revision committee. How come? I don't. I don't know. Okay, I know. Okay, so now they appoint the charter commission and they come up with the proposal for two successive terms. Go back again. But guess when it starts? Ten years from now. So you'll have 34 incumbents in the city council who can run for a third Okay, term. okay. This uh, is outrageous. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Let me just step back for a second. You've ripped everybody. Yeah. Give me an everybody. example of an effective leader and what makes an, a, a, a leader effective. Tell me. Who? No, I told you some examples of effective leadership. I thought about Lyndon B. Johnson. Oh, until excuse he made me. A, That's oh, uh, 300 current? years ago. Well, you mean current? Yes. Oh, there aren't any. Oh, <laughs> nice. I can't think nice. of one. That's uh, it. So I, I might, I might, I might give an example. Then you see, you have too many examples of people messing up. No, but give me, I think give Shelley, me, give me I think, a little. I think Shelley Silver is an effective leader in the New York State Assembly. Talk about it. I mean, all right, what can I talk about? I mean, the more I talk about, the more examples I will say. Well, he's not that good. But <laughs> Nice. But among the, the terrible people we have in state government. Oh, nice. I like oh, Shelly Silver. Shelly's going to be real happy with you. Okay. I like Shelly Silver. You are he stands up for what he believes in. He's principled. And he won't flip flop. Okay. He a man, he's, a, he's a man, to my, to, to my estimation, a man of personal integrity. He's a mensch. I won't go that far. There are very few mentions. Oh, okay. I don't know them that well. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You're on Fox and... Love Fox. You love Fox. Love Why Fox do you love Fox? I love Fox News Channel because that's where the audience is. <laughs> that's it, simply. <laughs> hey. More eyeballs and ears the I better. I love Fox because that's where the audience is. And the audience loves me. That every time I go on Fox News, oh, I, I know. get I You get, get all kinds of fan mail. I mean, you send it to me. I mean, I mean, really. phone calls. Talk to me. What, what makes Fox interesting to because, you, other than the size of the audience? Because Fox News Channel, unlike other uh, networks, they really believe in debate. They believe in having a discussion um, between people who don't agree with each other. Now, that's not the case with CNN. That's not the case with MSNBC. Uh, and other networks. Um, in fact, those other networks, in my estimation, are just when it comes down to the question of race, they're paternalistic. They're like the New York Times. They're paternalistic. Oh, God. But who they else do you want to rip? Go they ahead. can't stand having a black person who's iconoclastic in terms of their thinking, who doesn't beat the same racial drum of Al, as Al Sharpton. The New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, all they know about black people and black leadership is Al Sharpton, the buffoon. Okay. And wait, that is a shame. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. You like being the iconoclast. Now, is the iconoclast sort of your, your essence, or is there a little bit of uh, that involved in it until you catch the, the movement? I, I mean, that movement. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> prestige in being an iconoclast. No, there's no, there's no prestige and okay. no money in being an iconoclast, let me tell you. Because people these days, including media, want to typecast you. They want to say, you're either left or you're right. Well, they just say you're crazy. I mean, well, I mean well, you're, that's different. Joyce, Joyce, whatever, Pernick suggested that I was crazy. Okay. Yeah. I know at least he's not at the New York Times anymore. Uh, but I'm not crazy. No, okay, go ahead. I'm, I, I'm as, as... This is like I Nixon. Am, I'm not a crook. I, you're not crazy. Oh, uh, easy. Go easy. Ahead. He was oh, a crook. Okay. <laughs> and I think you're crazy, but go ahead. Go, go ahead. Well, if I'm crazy... Um, this is truly an Orwellian world. This is an Alice in Wonderland existence. Well, I mean, excuse me, if you look at state politics, we've been down the rabbit hole for how long? Come on. Well, that's right. And But some, there has to be some sanity. And there has to be some objective, independent, true judgment about how our leaders are failing us. And, and you leaders, are that person. I believe I am. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me about two things. Number one, Andrew Cuomo and your expectations. I have no expectations of Andrew Cuomo. Um, no. I have no expectations of Andrew Cuomo. Positive or none at all? I have no expectations of Andrew Cuomo. Why? He's just another politician. Okay. I, I, I'm running um, based on uh, a, a policy platform that is, is, didn't seem liberal to me. At all. Well, I mean, he doesn't claim to be liberal, does he? No, he's a, he comes from a liberal family. He's a well, liberal. Well, excuse me. He, I worked mean, you're in doing the, he worked in the DNA? Clinton, he worked in the Clinton administration. Okay, he's a liberal. okay, okay. Oh. Wait a second. 30 seconds. Just hold yourself got? off. All right. NPR. 
NPR? Juan Williams. Go ahead. Oh, Juan Williams, I have to disclose. Juan Williams is a friend of mine. Go, a go, good go, friend of mine. Yeah, a member but, of my board I mean, of directors. You, you were a friend of a couple of people you ripped today, but go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't rip Juan. Go ahead. I, 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 concur, I concur with Juan's position, and, and, and I support Juan. NPR was knee-jerk, and I think it was hypocritical. And, and applying a rule against Juan, it does not apply against its other NPR correspondents and communicators, in, including people who work for NPR, who go on TV all the time giving their opinions about newsmakers and news topics. Oh, and God. you want me to name them? You know who they no, are. Okay. Nina Totenberg, others. I, I didn't ask you. Oh, okay. But, but you, you, if you, you want to volunteer. You always want evidence. You insist on evidence. Okay, okay. An example. Okay. So I gave you one. Right now. Again, yeah. 30 I used seconds to have a, I used to have a show on NPR. I used to be a, a regular panelist. I know. On, 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 yeah. on, and you, and you on like three Fox years. much better than I like, N NPR. I like NPR. Oh, okay. I like NPR. If they gave you a show, you take it. wrong, they're wrong. You take it. If they gave me a show, I'd take it. If Fox News Channel gave me a show, I'd take it. If CUNY TV gave me a show, I'd take it. See, but we know what you're CNN, coming from. If CNN gave me a show, I'd take it. You know why? Because we need balance. We need diversity of opinions in the media. And we need people, I hate to sound like this, but we need people who are smart, uh -oh. who, who, who do not engage in racial buffoonery, and do not give people a pass because they're skin color. This we is you. That. That's right. That's why I say so I need a show. A, it's we it's should a, do a show together. Oh, yeah, salt we'll and pepper. Salt, oh, salt you and can pepper. be salt and I can you be pepper. pepper. Very you. good. Thumb, two thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I've done probably somebody's trade oh, get out of here. <laughs> My thanks to Michael Myers for being on the show. See you next week when my guest will be the legendary Joe Franklin. Oh. Join us. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.